Hello YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to yet another episode of Creating Our Community Project. My name's Wayne and I've been taking you for all these amazing episodes um, of creating this pretty big online system uh, with obviously having a web system in the background um, then obviously working into Unreal where the users will be able to log in and etc. Um, so what we're going to be working on today is a pretty easy lesson this one. Um, all we're going to do is create the login widget on our uh, sort of you could say our third person example map. I don't know what you guys have been using, but I, I made a third person example map in the first session. Um, so I'd imagine some of you would be using that one. Whereas, I mean, it could work with anything that you want to use, even if it's a blank project and etc. So it doesn't really matter um, what you have used so far. So Ray, right, today's nice and easy, um, not too difficult. However, your next session is going to be quite complex. So I'm going to leave that for um, another day because that could be a very long video clip. So without further ado, let's move in. So where we got up to in our last session is we got to a point where we finished our web system. So everything was working online. We created the login systems and you could log in and you could see stats. Well, we haven't put, implemented the stats just yet, but you could see everything that was required for that. So what we're going to do now is basically we're just going to look at creating the, the system for the user to be able to log in um, and etc. So what we need to do, the first thing is we're going to create a new, fold, uh, a new folder. I'm going to call this maps because we're going to make uh, quite a few maps for our game. Um, we're going to have, for example, where all the menu systems are going to lie. Um, and then we're going to have another one for a lobby. So remember, we're following sort of the H1Z1 type of idea. So we're going to have a lobby where all the users can jump into that lobby. Then after a certain amount of time, it will then jump into another map. So I'm going to show you how to do that through these sessions. So you need to have a folder called maps. And you need to create a new folder. Um, I'm going to call that blueprints. Now, you know me, if you've been following my, my videos, I like coloring things in. So I'm just going to set the color of my maps to yellow um, and my blueprints to blue. Obviously, it makes sense if you just give them the same colors. It's just so I know which, which um, folders I'll be working with. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our maps. And all we need to do is we're going to go to File, New Level. And it's going to be an empty level because we don't want to have anything in it. So we're just going to have an empty level. As you can see, there's nothing inside this level. And we're just going to go File and Save because we want to save the level. So we're going to go into Maps. And we're just going to call this Main Menu. OK, so we're just going to call it Main Menu for now. And basically, it's just a level, really. And we're going to tell the system to load this level um, straight away so the user will be able to jump into that level. Um, and basically, that's just going to control um, all our widgets inside that level. So um, we're going to get into that, that, that part of the session pretty much now, honestly. So in our blueprints, we're going to make a new folder inside here. And we're going to call that widgets, because uh, we're going to hold all our widgets in there inside the blueprints, because don't forget, widgets are blueprints. So we're going to hold that into there. Um, and we're going to have a few more folders that are going to pop into this section. Um, but for now, we're just going to work on this single one here, um, just for the widgets itself. So we're going to go into there. And we're going to make a new widget. So we're going to go to user interface. And it's going to be a widget blueprint. So we're going to select that. And I name my things the W at the front and underscore. And I want you to call this login. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter what you call it. But I'm just going to call mine login. So at least they know where they're going to be logging into. It obviously makes sense if we name things correctly. I'm just going to save that. I'm just going to open up the widget blueprint. It's going to be nothing fantastic. I like dragging it into there. It just makes my life a little bit more easier. Now, I know a lot of people do um, a lot of fancy stuff with their menus. Um, etc. I mean, you can leave that um, for last, but we really what we want to do is make the system work. Um, so I'm going to make it very simple. I'm not going to go crazy into graphics and laying things up in horizontal boxes and vertical boxes and all that mess. I mean, you guys are here just to um, know how to make the system. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag two buttons on. Um, I'm just going to do one for now. Make it a little bit bigger. That'll do. And we're just going to drag some text onto that button. And what we're going to do is just copy this button and then paste it in. So first we have two buttons now. Um, I find that probably the easiest way to throw buttons in. Okay. The first button, we can give it a name in the text field here. I'm going to say login. Spelling is atrocious. Login. And then this one we're just going to have as quit. Okay. So very simple. Um, nothing too fancy. Just login and quit will do for now. Then what we need to have is we need to have um, a text box. We're going to drag one of them in. 
uh, make it nice and big. So a nice little big text box there. And we're going to duplicate this. We're going to copy that and again paste it into our canvas. Gonna paste it into there. Like so. I'm just going to put it underneath just like so. Make a bit of space. And then all we need now is just two text fields. Um, and this text box we're going to call the username. So basically they're going to know where to put their username into. We can make it bigger if you want. Um, that's fine. We can make it as big as we like. So we're just going to stick username just there. So they're going to know where to put their username into. Um, and we're going to do the same. So we're just going to copy that um, and paste that in. Oops, wrong place. I'm going to paste that into there. Obviously, that one's not going to be called username, is it? Um, that one's going to be called password. So we're going to change that to password. Oops, we forgot to put those little two dots at the end. Okay. Now, obviously, the text in these boxes are really small. Um, we haven't really set how we want them to look. So what we can do is just jump into the style here. Um, and we're just going to change that value to 21. I think that's um, reasonable enough for now. So we're just going to have that as 21. We don't need anything more than that. Um, 21 is perfectly fine, especially in this instance. Okay. And um, what we could do is we could just throw the text field in there. And we could just give our game a name. So we could just say, um, where's a, uh, oops, where's a, uh, oops, YouTube tut, just for tutorial. Obviously make that bigger. And there we go. So we've got, normally you put a graphic in there. Um, we make it all look nice. But in this case, we're just making it look Pretty simple because you guys are here to learn how to make it all work, as I say. So we're just going to keep it very easy. Now, what I find the easiest way to make sure it's all fitting quite nicely on the person's monitor is we can select each one and then use this little flower tool thing here. And we're just going to centerize that there. We're going to do the same for the usernames. So just make sure it snaps into the middle. So we're going to try to do it in the middle if we can. And we'll do the same for the text field. And we'll do the same for this one. This is a very lazy way of doing it, guys. Just remember, we are, we're only here to make the system work, not to make it look good. Apologies. I forgot to turn my phone on silent. Do the same with the buttons. We're going to set that there. And we're also going to do the same with this button. I'm going to set that there. OK. So what we currently have is just basically some text fields and some text boxes. Uh, currently, this is going to be a text field, so you can write it into it, and you'll be able to see it. Um, but we don't want anyone to see the password. So if we just click on this text box here, and move ourselves over to the details panel. If you scroll down, you should be able to see where it says appearance. We can change that to is password. Just make sure you select that. So every time you type into that, um, it's only going to show, um, you know, the little asterisks. So it's not going to show anything else um, in regards to what we're doing for passwords and stuff. So let's just compile and save because that's pretty much done for now. Um, and so we're not going to code it just yet. We're going to leave that for the next session. But what we need to do is we need to show make this show um, when the main menu starts, so when we start the level, we want that screen to show. And I'm going to um, show you how to stick that on right away. So basically, all we've got to do is we're going to go to Blueprints. Make sure you're on your main menu, by the way. Um, so make sure you're on the right level. Open Level Blueprint. And it's very simple to make this work. We're going to say on the Event Begin Play, so on this node, the Event Begin Play, what we need to do is we need to create a widget. So create the widget. Okay, so we're going to create the widget. We're going to select the widget we want to use, and that's going to be the login widget for now. So we're going to use that one. Um, so the, obviously, that's the widget we want to show straight away when the user starts. I mean, maybe if you have like a video before, then obviously you might play that and then go into the login widget. Um, but in this case, we're not making any intros or anything for the game. For the owning player, obviously, that's our play controller. Um, so we're going to get the play controller for that. Okay, so we're just going to get that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add it to the viewport. So add to viewport. I'm just going to add that to the viewport, just like that. Okay. And then what we need to do is once it's added to the viewport, obviously we want to set the input mode game. Um, so we can drag off this node. I'm going to say set input game mode, and we want it to be game and UI because obviously the user interface we need to work with. Apologies, I don't know why my Things going absolutely crazy. Let's turn the sound off. Sorry about that. So we're going to set the input for um, the game mode and obviously the UI. And we need to fix some stuff to go into the targets here. So the return value, 
this one here. So our, our widget needs to go into the focus mode. So we're going to drag that in to there. Now, what I like doing is I like double clicking on um, the node lines and then obviously just making some extra nodes to keep the wiring nice and clean. Uh, you just double click on it um, and obviously it'll give you a node and you can move it about. And then what we need to plug in next is the target and obviously it's the player controller, which is our target. And again, I'm just going to double click on the line. Um, oops, I don't want to do that. Um, and I'm just going to drag it down just like this, just so it looks a little bit more cleaner. I don't know why, I'm just a bit of a clean freak. I like everything to look nice and clean. And that's pretty much everything we need to know on getting the widget to work. So we can compile that. And let's go back to our main menu. Just hit the save button. And if we play, so I like playing from a new editor window. So if we play, it does pop up with our main screen and we can start typing information in. So our username and notice if I type the password in, oh, we didn't change the password text field. So we'll just quickly do that. So I gave that a value of, I can't remember, 21. We'll do the same for this one. So 21, pound save and play. So we can see, we can type it in. Everything's of the same value um, or same same size that we want. And basically, once we click these buttons, um, it's going to connect to our database. So when we hit this login button, it's going to send off a request to the database, check through the database to see um, what's actually happening in there. Um, so if that username and stuff exists, we're going to do that. And then obviously, if we quit, if we quit the game, that will then quit. So the idea is, is that we're going to log in. And then once the user's logged in, um, we'll just switch to a, a different screen for now, but we can then work on different menus to show servers and, and etc. So a nice short lesson today. Um, wasn't a very long one at all. It was just basically setting up our UI that we need to set up. Hopefully you enjoyed that session. Um, I know it's very quick because I've been through um, widgets and a lot of you have done widgets before, um, but just in case you're new and you are following this tutorial, um, basically that's how you'd set up your widget. So again, thank you very much um, for joining me for this session. My name's Wayne. Remember, if you like this video, hit the like button. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next episode where it gets a little bit more hectic because we have to start doing a lot of blueprinting. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again. Goodbye.